Good afternoon. So I'm supposed to speak on can art change? Actually, it's a question that I've asked for many years. Probably the first time when I was 17 or 18, which was obviously many, many years ago, when I was in college and I performed my first street play. It was a play on dowry and uh, I was supposed to be the dowry victim. We would go into the bastis, the slums. I was in the middle, there were these orange ribbons that were supposed to be fire. And there was, you know, the, the ribbons were surrounded, they were surrounding me, there were songs in the play, the story was about this woman and her struggle. At the end of the play, when we would take a bed sheet and walk around to collect funds, the women, some of the older men, they would cry, they would touch me, they would say, Beta tum theek to ho? Are you okay? And I would wonder that what are they even talking about? Can't they see it's just a play that I'm fine and I was just performing? For me, I realized that um, dowry, the issue of dowry was an issue. It was something that happens to them. It was something that I read in papers on the fourth or the fifth page. It was in my life. But for them, it was their life. It was something that happened to their daughters, to their sisters. And, uh, you know, we would make eye contact. When you do a street theater, it's like this. I connect with the audience and at that time I really used to think that with every play that we did we were changing the world it was that kind of idealism because you felt you impacted lives in small little ways over the years now with 40 films in 10 different languages many of the names you wouldn't even know because they are in Malayalam and Kannada and Marathi and Bengali and whatnot and unfortunately we only get to see the more mainstream cinema but having worked in all these different films and having met people after those films and having thought about it, there is art really useful. I mean, don't we often think that art is a luxury? Art is for the elite. Art is an expensive medium. And I'm focusing a little more on cinema because that's what I've, that's my, been my main interaction in terms of art. I know my father is a painter and I grew up in the world of art. But cinema is what I have engaged in in some ways as an actor, I did two films as a director. And I've realized that cinema that has a conscience can, if not create, can impact change. And change, when I say it's not, it's not creating a revolution, it's not even something that's tangible that you can see and put a finger to it, but something that very slowly, subliminally uh, goes into your subconscious, where you don't even realize that you're changing. I feel the same way for the last 30 years, with that same kind of mad idealism, believing that we all can do our little bit, we all are little drops, attempting to create that change. But the reason I feel this way is that even though my core values and thoughts remain the same, there's something that is changing. And I think that something is how I respond to situations. Um, 20 years ago, maybe I was much more angry. I was angry with injustice, inequality, and I justified that anger. Today, I feel that I've mellowed. I still feel as agitated, as distressed when all of those things occur around me and we are in times where it's occurring all around us. Um, in fact, soon after this, I'm going to the public meeting that's been called for Asifa and the Una case. And, you know, so it is around us. But instead of just being angry, which actually helps nobody, you think about how you can channel it. And I think art can be a great catalyst. It can be a means to an end. It can be a means to share grievances. It can be a means to reflect anguish. It can be definitely a mirror to what's happening in society. It can create a sense of empathy. All of that without us almost knowing it. Because when, when a good film, and if you can think back, the films that have impacted you, art that has impacted you, a poem, a book. In fact, what really influences us, we don't know. If you ask me, what is that one thing that influenced you, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I know that the books I've read, the films I've watched, the people I've met, all of them have very gradually gone into my subconscious and have created those little shifts in me. So I, I want to believe that art has a role to play. Societies that have nourished and you know helped and encouraged art have been different. 
and that cinema can play its part in creating that shift within us, creating that shift in the mindset. When I did Fire 20 years ago, it's um, it's probably a little more actually, 1996 is when I did this film called Fire, which explores the relationship between two women, a subject that was not explored ever before in such an upfront way. And whether people liked the film or they didn't or they were confused, which was pretty much largely the case because that's a subject of homosexuality, something we just didn't discuss. We pretended it didn't exist. And it brought out double standards and hypocrisy of a society at large and confronted us with our own prejudices and biases. And I can tell you there are very few films that I have worked in or I've seen that have created actually a tangible impact. I think today, if uh, the, the Delhi High Court has repealed the act that criminalizes homosexuality or the fact, more importantly, even the conversations that today we have about LGBTQ issues is probably there's a little bit of seed that fire had sowed 20 years ago. It has given us a vocabulary at least to talk. I remember 20 years ago, even journalists, when they would come to interview me, they wouldn't use the word gay or lesbian. And this is a long time ago, but they would, these English dailies, educated people would come and say, so what do you feel about that kind of relationship? You know, they would come and ask you, are you, are you that kind of a person? Because you've acted in it. Did you have that? Do you feel it has invoked in you? So that level of discomfort and not even finding a vocabulary to today where we can talk about these issues openly confront our own prejudices and biases question the words like normal that has been sort of ingrained in us so i think some films have actually impacted in a larger way you could of course always say that you know if they have impacted why haven't things changed we have had so many wonderful films and look we're still in a mess we're probably in a bigger mess with things then what's the point of art but that's the thing, when there is a bigger mess, when things are not going right, isn't that the time also to create those conversations through art, through cinema? Because films, they cannot create revolutions, but they can trigger conversations. And a lot of the things that we just don't talk about, we just don't argue them, we don't debate, we don't have healthy debates. People are screeching on televisions, that's not a debate. That's not a civil conversation. That's not engaging. So I think that that's what cinema tries to do. It's not that you do you see one film and you're going to see an impact the next day or that one film is going to change anything. It's the cumulative effect of art that changes our mindsets very gradually over generations. If, if you think of a world without arts. I mean, it's almost impossible to think. Imagine no song in your head, no film, no play, no poetry. It's almost a world that we cannot imagine. And what it also does, it inculcates a sense of creativity in all of us. When we are watching something, why do we get, why do we get sort of drawn into that world? You know, when someone's getting killed, it's ketchup or whatever that you know, a particular kind of cough syrup that has a nice red color. We know it's not blood. Yet we cry, we feel the anguish, Something throw, somebody throws something at it. We almost wince with that pain. We, we feel almost the pain of the characters. So I think a film that is, that is honestly made, because I don't know why, but magically I think cinema can tell you the intent of the maker even though the person is not really saying it, and not just cinema, I think art. Any form of art, if you really, if you have developed an ear for music, if you have developed an eye for storytelling, you can feel what is the intention of the maker. If a very sexual scene is being shown, or a very, or a very heinous rape, um, all rapes are heinous, that, pardon my language, because that's really wrong to say a heinous rape. Every form of sexual abuse is heinous. So when you see that kind of a scene, you immediately know that is this done to titillate or is this being done so that you know you're, you kind of almost feel the pain in your belly and you realize what kind of a world we have created. So it's the intention of the maker and the intention of the audience when it kind of comes together. That's when a, a relationship is formed. 
I've also done plays like a stage like this, a proscenium, a street theater, and cinema. All three are so different, and yet they have a sort of connection with the audience. Once you shoot a film, once you're an actor, you've done your bit, what you see on the screen, you don't see the audience. And yet you create that connection with the audience. Because when you meet them, when people come and sometimes often think that the character is the actor. You must have felt that, you know, when, when you like a character, you almost like the performance. You feel, oh, that was wonderful because you're so drawn into the character, you've almost forgotten the performer, which is great. That's the best form of acting where you can almost forget it. Currently, I'm working on a film on Manto. I don't know if you know of him, but he was a great short story writer of the 40s, very ahead of his times. And um, often people ask me, you're so sort of engaged with issues of women. Why are you making a film on a man? You know, wish life was so simple. It was just, just about man and a woman. I think there are few and far between, no offense men to the men, those who have really taken the cause of the women, not in a preachy, high-handed uh, sort of a way, in a righteous way, but in a deeply, deeply sensitive way. He, in fact, would say that if you cannot bear my stories, it's because we live in unbearable times. He's talked a lot about his writings and art and, and the written word being a reflection of society. And I thought this would be my way to respond to everything that's happening around us through his stories, through his life, through his convictions. When you have strong convictions, courage automatically follows. He was tried for obscenity six times and every time he fought it. Every time he had the courage to fight it. He was an extremely loving husband and a loving father. And he knew the more he wrote, the more he spoke, he was going to get into more trouble. And that's going to impact his family. And that was his, a very big dilemma for him. But he was so compelled to sort of write as he felt and as he thought. And he was so compelled to speak up that it was almost something that was beyond him. And I think if one comes with that courage, and you know you use your art with that conviction then you you do manage to somewhere stir the heart and impact the mind when the heart you know we actually separate head and heart which i've begun to feel more and more that it's it's you know we've been given the wrong words there shouldn't have been two words for them because the head and the heart they feel the same way we why do we sort of assume that the heart feels and the head thinks because our thoughts are impacted by emotions and our emotions also been impacted by our thoughts. When we say this, I feel this in my gut, what does it really mean? This is my intuition. What does it really mean? Even that, your gut, your intuition, you have to groom it. It depends on the exposure you've had. So all of this, when it gets aligned and you feel something, when it creates an empathy. When I did a film called Firak, which was my first film, it was a post-Gujarat riot film in the sense it was about how people are impacted by acts of violence. There was no violence in the film. And there were all kinds of people, people who had you know, more secular leanings, those who probably felt differently, had political differences. But at the end of the film, somewhere if they felt empathetic to the characters, irrespective of their religion, I would say that was a small little victory or that was a small little intent with which one made the film. Can we create a more compassionate and an empathetic world? Can art play its role in doing that? Many of my own colleagues say, oh, you're, you're more of an activist than an actor. Uh, the role of films is to entertain. There's enough problems in the world. Why bother to, you know, then again give them a heavy story, a dark story? Some people say, well, that's escapist cinema. Mainstream cinema is always going to be there because by its very definition, the idea is to please a lot more people. When you're pleasing a lot more people, you're actually pleasing nobody. Because how do you know how everybody feels and how are you going to reach out to everyone? But when you truly, truly decide that, yes, this is what I want to this is what I want to show in a film, in an engaging sort of a story, then it's not about entertaining. I think all of us want to be engaged. When you see a film, you don't come prepared, oh, I'm just going to have fun. If you're engaged, you've forgotten that you're sitting in a theater for two hours and you're with the story and with the characters. 
isn't that engaging and isn't that entertaining? Because entertaining that narrows the definition, the purpose of art. But you know, the kind of cinema that I'm talking about, it cannot happen without patrons, without audiences. And that's where we struggle. Lot of good films, lot of good scripts never get made because the audiences don't embrace it. Because they want to watch it on their device. We all do. We are all complicit in it. But how do we support good cinema? How do we support good art? How do we create that relationship and create a stronger bond? The ones who are receiving are as much needed for artists for them to express. And in these times where art must play a very significant role, because many other forms are being squashed, there is a culture of silence, sometimes a culture of fear, freedom of expression is sometimes being thwarted. So in these times, art becomes even more relevant. Bertolt Brecht said a beautiful thing. He said, will there be singing in the dark times? And then he answers, yes, there will be singing of the dark times. Thank you.